three and a half years ago, we saw the emergence of a new virus that was very contagious and no one in the world had any immunity. And because of that, this new virus could cause severe illness in people, including you know, hospitalizations and death. Fast forward three and a half years later, 99% of the world or more have some degree of immunity from prior exposure to the virus or from the vaccine. I think what's important to know now is there are some new subvariants that appear to be causing many surges, but we're not seeing critical surges of, of serious illness, you know, ICU, ventilators, or death. So we're in a position where we're seeing a little more spread because of these new subvariants. People that are worried about getting COVID is probably a good time to mask. And I think as we see people masking in the community, we should understand not everyone wants to mask, but we should respect people who want to mask. Um, and people at higher risk should get this new booster, which is predicted to come out in mid to late September. I recommend the booster, get a hard recommendation for higher risk people. For normal healthy people who just don't want to get COVID, I mean, even though there's very low risk for a normal healthy person to end up in the hospital, there's still a risk of long COVID. And there's still a risk of spreading it to your, your elderly neighbors or parents or, or higher risk people. So hard, strong recommendation for high risk individuals to get the booster. I think it's, it's a recommendation, probably not quite as hard for other lower risk individuals to get the booster. The bivalent booster gives protection against these new subvariants. And this booster that's coming up in mid to late September should provide additional protection. To date, the information we have is that the medicines to treat COVID, like uh, Paxlovid, still works, the new variants. So high risk individuals who contract COVID, it's still reasonable to call your doctor, you know, ask about medications. There's some issues about drug interactions and so on. But for high risk individuals who are symptomatic, it's still a recommendation to consider these antiviral drugs.